today we discuss about morphology of earthworm morphology of earthworm morphology refers to external features morphology refers to external features in morphology we study about all the things which are visible from outside in body of earthworm and we study morphology under following headings the different headings are the first one is its shape and size regarding its shape body of earthworm is body is elongated cylindrical pointed towards anterior end while round or blunt at posterior end and the body is bilaterally symmetrical it is bilaterally symmetrical the bilateral symmetry bilateral symmetry it refers to that type of symmetry in which body is divisible into two equal and identical halves by only one imaginary line which passes from center of the body and body is divisible into two equal identical right and left halves so this is about the shape body is elongated cylindrical pointed towards anterior end and round or blunt at the posterior end and is bilaterally symmetrical regarding its size average length of body average length of the body is about 150 mm while width is about 3 to 5 mm and the widest part of body the widest part of body is present somewhat behind anterior end and regarding its shape the body seems like this so this is the anterior end which is somewhat pointed this is posterior end which is round and the widest part is somewhat behind the anterior and this is the widest part now the figure will get completed later on this is about shape and size and the next one is about its color the body of earthworm is of glistening glistening dark brown colored or clay colored and this dark brown color the dark brown color is due to pigment porphyrin 
द पिगमेंट पोरफाइरिन गिव्स डार्क ब्राउन कलर टू बडी पिगमेंट पोरफाइरिन गिव्स डार्क ब्राउन कलर एंड दिस पोरफाइरिन इज फॉर्म्ड पोरफाइरिन इज फॉर्म्ड फ्रॉम chlorophyll present in food and this porphyrin is present in circular muscle it is present in circular muscle layer of body wall in body wall later we read about the histology of the body wall in body wall different layers like the outer layer cuticle then there is epidermis then there is muscles and internally there is presence of coelomic epithelium and in muscles there are circular muscle and longitudinal muscles in the layer of circular muscle the porphyrin pigment is present so the porphyrin is pigment which gives dark brown color to body of earthworm and this porphyrin it is formed from chlorophyll which is present in the food and it lies in circular muscle layer of the body wall apart from giving dark brown color porphyrin this porphyrin porphyrin also protects body porphyrin also protects body from bright light and regarding the color dorsal surface of body dorsal surface of body is more dark in comparison to ventral surface the dorsal surface of body dorsal surface is more dark in comparison to the ventral surface and one more thing throughout the dorsal surface through out dorsal surface a median dark line is present a median dark line is present throughout the dorsal surface which is mid dorsal blood vessel visible through integument okay this is about the color so in color we have studied the body of earthworm is glistening dark brown colored or it may be clay colored the dark brown color is due to pigment porphyrin and this porphyrin is formed from chlorophyll and is present in circular muscle layer of the body wall apart from providing color the porphyrin also protects body from bright light of the solar radiation or simply we can say that protects body from the light and one more thing in color the dorsal surface of body is more dark in comparison to ventral surface upper surface of body is more dark in comparison to the lower surface and throughout the dorsal surface a median dark line is present and that median dark line is 
mid dorsal blood vessel which is visible through the integument the mid dorsal blood vessel visible through the integument on dorsal surface this is the median dark line this one is the median dark line now we move into the next point the next point is segmentation next point is segmentation body of earthworm is metamerically segmented meta merically segmented body is metamerically segmented that is also called as meta merism metamerism which is also called as true segmentation metamerism is also called as true segmentation is present in earthworm in it the external segmentation the external segmentation corresponds with the internal segmentation and it is also called complete segmentation now there is external segmentation as well as internal segmentation the external segmentation external segmentation is due to intersegmental group intersegmental group while internal segmentation internal segmentation is due to septa or septum in singular external segmentation is due to intersegmental group and internal segmentation is due to septum or septa now the main features of metameric segmentation features features of metameric segmentation are the features of metameric segmentation are the main features are number of segments is fixed number of segment is fixed like in earthworm about 100 to 120 segments are found each segment is called metamer or somite each segment is called as metamer or somite and all segments are alike except first segment and last segment except first and last segment all other segments are alike and another feature is all segments are at same level of maturity maturity of 
all segments maturity level of all segment is also same and the segments are interdependent the segments are interdependent with each other and the most important feature is some organ of mesodermal origin is found repeated in segments these are the main features of the metameric segmentation or true segmentation the most important points which we have to remember is number of segment is fixed that means the number of segment remain constant like in earthworm about 100 to 120 segments are present throughout the lifetime and each segment of body is called as metamer or somite and the segments are alike all segments are alike except the first segment and the last segment and the segments are at same level of maturity maturity level of all segments are same and segments are interdependent with each other one segment depends upon another segments and some organ of mesodermal origin like muscles are found repeated in all segments this is the main features of the metameric segmentation now when we make segmented body the body become like this so this is the segmented body of the earthworm now the next point is head head means the part of the body which lies towards front during locomotion and where most of the sense organs are present so head means that part which lies front during locomotion and most of the sense organs are present there such type of head that means a distinct head with sense organs is absent in earthworm distinct head is absent and first segment of body which bears mouth is called peristomium the first segment of the body which bears mouth is called as peristomium and a fleshy lobe like projection arises or present in first segment which is called prostomium so the first segment of the body bears mouth and the first segment is called as peristomium a fleshy projection is present in first segment and that projection is called as prostomium this prostomium is boring organ of earthworm the boring organ of earthworm is prostomium and mouth remains overhanged by prostomium and one more thing more photoreceptors are present in prostomium 
मोर और मैनी फोटो रिसेप्टर्स दैट मीन्स लाइट सेंसिटिव सेल वी रीड अबाउट फोटो रिसेप्टर्स इन रिसेप्टर्स ऑफ द अर्थम लेटर मोर फोटो रिसेप्टर्स आर फाउंड इन इट मेनी फोटो रिसेप्टर्स आर प्रेजेंट नाउ लुक एयर वेन वी व्यू द एंटेरियर इन द बॉडी फ्रॉम सर्फेस दैट मीन्स टॉप we find this is first segment and this first segment this is first segment which is called a peristomium in surface view it seems like this and this is the fleshy projection this projection is called a prostomium this is surface view that means if this is orthom when we view it from the top like this at this time we see like this this is prostomium and this is the first segment which is called as the peristomium now when we <coughs> view from side on lateral view we find like this this is mouth and this is the first segment this is first segment or peristomium and here is this structure this structure is prostomium and this opening is mouth this is lateral view that means when view when we view the earthworm from side like this then we find this type of arrangement this is first segment in first segment there is a crescentic opening this opening is called as mouth and the mouth remains overhanged by the prostomium this is prostomium okay this is about the head so distinct head is absent first segment in which the mouth is present that is called as peristomium and a fleshy projection is present in first segment that projection is called as prostomium the prostomium is boring organ of earthworm that means it helps to make the burrows and mouth remains overhanged by prostomium which is visible here in this figure and many photoreceptors are present light sensitive cells are present these photoreceptors they detect the intensity of light as well as duration of light we study about them in receptors topic and the figure seems like this this is the surface view this one is prostomium this is the first segment peristomium and here this is the mouth on side view or lateral view okay this is about head now next point is clitellum clitellum which is also called a singulum the clitellum is a glandular band which encircles 14th 15th and 16th segments of body the 14th 15th and 16th segment of body let these are the segments three segments 14th 15th and 16th these three segments of the body they remain encircled by a glandular band and this glandular band is called as clitellum or cingulum so a glandular band which encircles 14th 15th and 16th segments of body is called as clitellum is it is glandular glandular means it is capable to produce some chemical substance a gland refers to any cell or group of cell which can produce chemical substance clitellum is also glandular in nature means that it produces mucus 
albumin and substances for the formation of cocoon. So, clitellum produces mucus, albumin and forms cocoon or it produces the substances for the formation of the cocoon. Now, due to its presence at certain part of the body, the whole body remains differentiated into three parts. Body remains differentiated into three parts and the three parts are the three parts are pre-clitellar region, clitellar region and post clitellar region. So, due to its presence, due to its presence, body remains differentiated into three regions. The three regions are pre clitellar region, the pre clitellar region, pre means in front, clitellar means clitellum. So, pre clitellar region lies in front of clitellum, pre means in front, clitellar means clitellum, that is it lies in front of clitellum, that is from first segment up to 13th segment. The next region is clitellar region. Clitellar region is the region where clitellum is present. Region where clitellum is present. Where it is present? It is present from 14th segment up to 16th segment. Now, the next region is post clitellar region. Post means back. Clitellar means Clitellum. That is, it lies behind clitellum. This region lies behind clitellum. That is, from 17th segment up to last segment. So, this is about the clitellum. Clitellum is a glandular band and it encircles 14th, 15th and 16th segments of the body. And as it is glandular, it produces substances and the substances produced by it are mucus, albumin and simply cocoon. And due to its presence, the body of earthworm remains differentiated into three regions and the three regions are preclitellar region, clitellar region and post clitellar region. Pre clitellar region is present in front of the clitellum that is from first segment up to 13th segment. Clitellar region is the region where clitellum is present and which is in 14th, 15th and 16th segment that is from 14th segment up to 16th segment. Post clitellar region is the region which lies behind clitellum that is from 17th segment up to last segment. Now, the next point is the next point is CT. 
city are the locomotory organelles of earthworm the locomotory organelles of earthworm are called as city and about 80 to 120 city are found in each segment 80 to 120 city are found in each segment except first segment last segment and Clytellar segments about 80 to 120 city are found in each segment but they are not present in first segment last segment and Clytellar segment in Clytellar segment city are present during early stages in Clytellar segments city are found in early stages that means when the earthworm is young now the city are made up of they are made up of nitrogenous organic substance chitin they are made up of nitrogenous organic substance that is chitin one point which we have to know is that this chitin it does not dissolve in KOH so when the earthworm is placed in KOH solution about 40 percent KOH solution for some period of time then the only one structure which left behind is CT all other things get dissolved only the CETA are left the, because they does not they do not dissolve in KOH solution now about their structure each CETA is elongated S shaped each CETA is elongated S shaped structure with solon middle part called nodulus about one third part remain outside body surface and is called neck while two third part remain embedded in body wall and is called base so a sita consists of three parts the three parts are middle solon part is called as nodulus one third part which remain outside body surface that is called as neck and the two third part which remain embedded in body wall that is called as the base so this is the sita this is its neck this is nodulus and this is its base 
so middle swollen part that is called is nodulus one third part which lies outside body surface that is called is neck and two third part which remain embedded in body wall that is called is the base so the sita about 80 to 120 in each segment except first segment last segment and the clitellar segment made up of nitrogenous organic substance chitin and consist of three parts neck nodulus and base now regarding their arrangement regarding their arrangement all sita of a segment let this one be a segment all sita of a segment are present somewhat at the middle forming a ring like structure that is they form a ring of the sita regarding arrangement all sitae of a segment are present at middle forming a ring of city this type of arrangement this type of arrangement is called peri chitin arrangement it can be represented like this this is a segment and the sita are present like this the sita are present like this this is the peri chitin arrangement all sita are present at middle forming a ring now one remember one thing in lumbricus and eutyphaeus and also in eutyphaeus lumbricine arrangement lumbricine or it is also called as octo chitin arrangement it is also called as octo chitin arrangement in which two pairs of sita are present in each half arrangement in which two pairs of city are found in each half it can be re represented or shown like this this is a segment and the city are present like this total eight city are found half in one half and half in the another half this type of arrangement is found in lumbricus and eutyphaeus and this is called as lumbricine or octochitin arrangement while in ferritima posthuma this is in ferritima in ferritima perichitin arrangement is present in which all the sita about 80 to 120 sita they are found somewhat at the middle forming ring so this is about the arrangement now the movement of sita is controlled by two type of muscles two type of muscles are responsible to regulate or control the movement of the city and the muscles the muscles responsible to control movement of city are a 
पेयर ऑफ प्रोट्रैक्टर मसल्स एंड सिंगल रिट्रैक्टर मसल सिंगल रिट्रैक्टर मसल एंड अ पेयर ऑफ प्रोटेक्टर मसल द प्रोटेक्टर मसल्स इज रेस्पोन्सिबल फॉर एक्सटेंसन of city while it is responsible for withdrawal withdrawal of city the protector muscle expands or it is responsible for extension of city while the retractor muscle is responsible for withdrawal of the city so this is all about the city one more thing which we have to know is that the sita remain embedded in setijera sac of body wall and is formed by formative cell or sita forming cell in body wall the sita they remain embedded in a sac like structure that sac like structure is called a setigerous sac and they are formed from the formative cell that means at the base of this setigerous sac the sita forming cell or formative cell is present okay now the function of sita function of city <coughs> the sita on ventral surface the sita which are present on ventral surface sita on ventral surface help to crawl on ground while city of dorsal and lateral surface help to move inside barut so the sita on ventral surface the sita which are present on ventral surface they help to crawl on ground while the sita of the dorsal and lateral surface they help to move inside the barut sita along with body muscle help in movement of earthworm sita and body muscles help in locomotion so this is about the sita sita along with the body muscles help in locomotion for the ortho now we read about apertures of body surface or body openings on the body surface there are different openings on body surface of earthworm and we have to know about the opening is of what where it is present its number and its function the four things are it is the opening of what what is its number and where it is present and finally what is its function the different apertures which are present on body are the first one is mouth mouth is anterior opening of alimentary canal mouth is anterior opening of alimentary canal 
end is present in ventral surface of first segment first segment means we have already studied it is called a peristomium the first segment is peristomium and there is a single opening which is present on ventral surface of the first segment that is peristomium and that is the opening of elementary canal elementary canal is a tubular structure inside which the process of digestion takes place and its anterior opening is called edge mouth and the mouth bearing segment is called edge peristomium that is first segment so this is about the mouth and ingestion of food is its function food enters inside the body or elementary canal through this mouth the next one opening is anus anus is posterior opening of elementary canal the posterior opening of elementary canal is called is anus there is a single opening and is present in last segment the last segment which bears anus that is called is pygidium the last segment which bears anus or where the anus is present that is called as the pygidium so the posterior opening of elementary canal is anus and is present in last segment that is pygidium now the next one opening is genital pores genital pore means the opening of the reproductive organ as we have already studied the earthworm is hermaphrodite that means it possesses both male reproductive organ as well as female reproductive organ so the genital pores are of two types the first type is called a male genital pores the male genital pores they are openings of common spermatic and prostatic duct so male genital pore are opening of common spermatic and prostatic duct this common spermatic and prostatic duct is formed by the association of vasa differentia and prostatic duct we read about it in detail in male reproductive organs of earthworm or in reproductive system so the male genital pores are the opening of common spermatic and prostatic duct regarding their number one pair a pair of male genital pores are present and each is present on ventro lateral position of 18th segment a pair of male genital pores are present which are opening of common spermatic and prostatic duct and each pore is present on ventro lateral position of 18th segment now what is their function the male gametes that is sperms and prostatic fluid passes out through it through the male genital pore the male gamete sperms and prostatic fluid passes out the next one type of pore is female genital pore the female genital pore is opening of common 
oviduct. The female genital pore is opening of common oviduct. The common oviduct is formed by the union of two oviducts. We read about it in detail in female reproductive organs. And there is presence of single female genital pore single female genital pore is present ventrally at the middle of 14th segment at the middle of 14th segment on ventral surface an opening is present and that opening is opening of common oviduct which is called as female genital pore. Now the next type of pore is spermathecal pores. Spermathecal pores are openings of Spermatheca. They are openings of spermatheca. Spermatheca are sac like structure which stores sperm after copulation. We read about them in female reproductive organs. Now, their number is they are four pairs, there is presence of four pairs of spermatheca openings, and where they are present, they are present each pair is present ventrolaterally, each pair is present ventrolaterally in the intersegmental group lying between 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, 8 and 8, 9 segments. So, there is presence of 4 pairs of spermathecal openings and they are the openings of the spermatheca. Each pair is present in ventrolateral position of intersegmental group lying between 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, 8 and 8, 9 segment. The intersegmental group refers to the group which separates or which lies between two successive segments and on the ventrolateral position of intersegmental group, the spermathecal pores are present like look here. This is fifth segment, sixth segment, seventh segment, 8th segment, ninth segment. Now, this is intersegmental group. This is intersegmental group between 5th and 6th segment. This one is intersegmental group between 6th and 7th segment. This is intersegmental group between 7th and 8th segment. And this is intersegmental group between 8th and 9th segment. Internally, there is presence of sac like structures. These are the spermatheca which are present inside and they open outside by opening which is present here. Here are the openings, these are the spermathecal openings. So, in this intersegmental group one ventral, ventrolaterally here, another ventrolaterally here, the same thing in all the intersegmental group which lies between 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, 8 and 8, 9 se segments. These are the spermathecal pores. Now, the next type of opening is nephridio pores. The nephridio pores are openings of
integumentary nephridia the nephridia are excretory organelles of the earthworm and in earthworm three types of nephridia are present which are septal nephridia pharyngeal nephridia and integumentary nephridia out of these three type of nephridia the integumentary nephridia directly opens outside on body surface through the openings and that openings are called as the nephridio pores and a number of nephridio pores a number of nephridio pores are found in each segment found scattered in each segment found scattered found scattered in each segment except in first two segments so the nephridio pores are openings of integumentary nephridia and there is presence of a number of nephridio pores scattered in each segment except in first two segments generally about 200 to 250 nephridio pores are found scattered in each segment however in the region of the clitellum their number is sharply increased about 2000 to 2500 pores are found in three segments that means clitellar segments and what is their function the metabolic waste passage out through them so the function is metabolic waste passes out through the nephridio pores the next one is now dorsal pores the dorsal pores they are openings of silomic chambers the dorsal pores are the opening of the silomic chambers silom or body cavity of earthworm remains differentiated into a number of smaller compartments by septa and the smaller compartments are called a silomic chambers and these silomic chambers they open outside by opening that opening is called as dorsal pore now regarding it a single median dorsal pore is present at the middle of each intersegmental group on dorsal surface lying behind 12th segment except in last intersegmental group so a single median dorsal pore is present at the middle of each intersegmental group on dorsal surface lying behind 12th segment except in last intersegmental group look here let this is ortho and this is 12th segment now from this is 13th and so on
Now, except in the last intersegmental group, all these intersegmental group at the middle possess one opening and that opening is called a dorsal pore. Now, through this dorsal pore, the silomic fluid comes out through dorsal pores. The silomic fluid comes out through the dorsal pores and it makes the body surface moist. The silomic fluid comes out under two conditions. The silomic fluid comes out when skin is dry and when earthworm gets stimulated. When the earthworm gets stimulated at that time and when the skin is dry at that time the silomic fluid comes out through the dorsal pore. Now this is about the dorsal pore. Next one is genital papil. There is presence of two pairs of genital papilla. Two pairs of genital papilla are found. Uh, each pair in ventrolateral position of 17th and 19th segment. Each pair on ventrolateral position of 17th and 19th segment and each genital papilla is small outgrowth. Each genital papilla is small outgrowth with cup shaped depression and contains a number of openings contains a number of openings of accessory glands and regarding its function they help to attach two earthworms during copulation. Let us look here. This is ventral surface of few segments. Let us make some more segments. Let us imagine this is 13th segment, this is 14th, this is 15th, this is 16th. 14th, 15th and 16th means clitellum is here. This is 17th, this is 18th and this is 19th. So, these are the few segments of body and this is ventral view of few segment. This is ventral view of few segments in 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th. Previously we have studied at the middle of 14th there is female genital pore on ventral lateral position of 18th there is presence of male genital pore and in 17th and 19th these are the genital papilla this one and this one these are the genital papilla this one is male genital pore male genital 
स्पोर एंड दिस वन इज फीमेल जेनाइटल पोर ओके दिस इज अबाउट मोर्फोलॉजी ऑफ ऑर्थोन